Hello, hello. Um, I am Lisa Larson Kelly. Uh, also, Lisa Marie NYC on Twitter and Learn from Lisa. It's my website blog. And uh, I have been working with real time communication and video for, oh, 10 years or so. Um, and I'm really excited to, uh, to be here today to talk to you guys about um, real time communication for everyone because that's sort of been a barrier in the past. Um, and I, you know, I, I will warn you, I don't have quite as many effects as Aaron did, but I do have a few. So, <laughs> um, so you know, I mainly do consulting and training, um, and I've had my share of startup ideas over the course of the past ten years, and uh, most of them have failed big time because of very, for various reasons. Um, uh, this one in particular was uh, licensing reasons. Um, the, the server to, um, to get the real-time communication webcam stuff working was using the F word, which we won't talk about, and uh, it just it costs too much to run it. Um, so these things don't work. So that's why I'm so excited that um, WebRTC is open source. It's for everybody. Um, you don't have to rely on proprietary software to do amazing things. So that's really... Um, my goal today is to get you uh, interested and excited about WebRTC. And how many of you have heard of it? Good. All right. And how many have actually tried to do anything with it? Yeah, like three or four, right? And you probably got started and saw, oh, what is this? I need server? What? What? Like big brick wall, right? So, um, so that's really what I want to do is get all of you familiar with WebRTC. What is it? What can it do? And um, so you can go back to your client, your boss, or just uh, you know to explain it, and and, uh, and then dive in deeper to it if you want to. So starting at the beginning, um, WebRTC is awesome. Um, but basically, what it is is a JavaScript API that lets you share video, voice, and data peer to peer without any plugins in the browser. So you might think, oh, wow, I can make Skype, right? I can do Skype in the browser. Skype in the next Skype killer. Um, please, it's definitely more than that. Um, I want you to think bigger. Think um, Amazon Mayday button, right? If, everybody, if anyone is familiar with that, it's a little button on the, um, the Kindle Fire. You press the button, and um, a customer service rep pops up in video right on the screen. And they can't take over the device, but they can point, they can draw on your screen and uh, point you to the menus that you need, things like that. Um, and that's also on the new phone as well. So um, it uses WebRTC technologies in it, along with a bunch of other stuff. Think machine to machine communication also. This isn't just browser to browser. Um, Google Chromecast uses WebRTC technologies in um, communicating between the phone and your TV. Um, so there's all sorts of things like that you can do. And of course, yes, you can also build Skype-type um, applications, but you can bake them right into your apps, um, you know, right into the website. Um, so I'm going to show you this uh, totally free custom chat room thing. I'm going to jump out of here. Chrome. And, and I've got it running here in Chrome um, on my Mac. And it is up here in slash Lisa. And um, you, know, you could go there right now, but be nice to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, so I'm going to drag that over. And you can see me there. Uh -huh. And I just love these aspect ratios are huge. There we go. Make it fit to the page. And look, somebody's there. <laughs> so I have it um, running in Chrome, and then also over here on a Nexus 7 as well, and that's on the Wi-Fi. Um, and it just works, right? So it's, yeah, <laughs> it's very cool. Um, and it's, uh, this particular one is, uh, it's a totally free service. Anybody can use it. You can grab your own room, um, totally free. I'm sure they have, uh, you know, um, 
upsells and so on to, uh, you know, for your company or whatever. And there's a ton of these companies are, are popping up all over the place. Um, wow. <laughs> all right, I'm jumping out of here now. Okay. Thanks for playing. <laughs> all right, cool. So, um, so that's just one example of, um, of what you can do. So it's clear that this is really happening. There, it isn't just this mythical thing that everybody, oh, this WebRTC, someday this spec's going to be ready. Um, people are building things on it right now. And companies are building you know, startups, and all sorts of things are happening. So it is going to be everywhere, because um, it, it really allows you to like I said, just bake it right into other things that you're building. So it's going to be in every aspect. It could be, you know, on devices, on, it could be on your refrigerator, like all sorts of things, right? So it's um, in ways that we haven't even probably even thought about yet. And maybe you're thinking about it right now. But there's always a but. Um, it doesn't work in IE or Safari right now. Um, so. Uh, but, you know, don't worry, I'll get you there. Um, there is momentum building, as I said. You know, people are doing this. It's going, when the internet wants something, right, it happens, right? We make it happen. So, um, right now, this is the state of things. We have um, browser support in Firefox, in, in um, uh, Chrome, and also in Opera. Um, Apple has joined the working group for the spec, but they haven't really, they didn't make a big deal out of it. They didn't really say much about it when they joined it back in February. Um, so there's, they're moving toward it. Something's, something's going to happen there. Um, and then there's Microsoft. Microsoft is an interesting case. Um, they are uh, currently not supporting it, but they are very involved in another group, which I'll talk about in a second, that is building a shim. So that it will, it will, you know, it will work. So um, there's movement there as well. Um, there's also this company called Temesis that has just recently, I think in the past week or two, created a plugin for IE. So it it's fully supports uh, WebRTC using their plugin. And to keep up to date with all the changes, because it changes a lot, um, is WebRTCReadyYet.com is a great resource to find out where things are working and where there's not, where they're not today. So I mentioned Microsoft. Um, there's, uh, the, the, there's the official working group that's working on the spec. And we've got you know, Cisco and Apple and um, Microsoft, or, uh, and well, Microsoft's in there. But um, also uh, Google is working really hard on that official spec. It's really been driven by the telecommunications people. Um, they want this stuff to work uh, and with legacy systems. So, I mean, that's the beauty about WebRTC is you can actually make a phone call to a landline from your browser using WebRTC. Um, it just you need to interface with all of those old systems, right? So they've kind of structured the spec to be able to do that, which is great. But for web developers, it really sucks. <laughs> it's not um, as efficient as it could be. And um, so there has been a, a group um, that has gotten, been driven by a company called Hook Flash. And they, um, they see a, a better way of doing things. Um, but they're just not getting as far as they want in the working group itself. So they have created a community group. And they're working on a shim. Um, my, this is the thing that Microsoft and Google are also all working on. Um, and it's, uh, the beauty of that is um, that it is object-oriented, which is nice. And you'll see why. This is a kind of example of uh, what we're dealing with in the spec right now. This um, WebRTC Hacks, uh, if you're .com, is a great resource for uh, keeping up with what's happening. And they've got tutorials and a great resource. But they have um, this utility they created, which doesn't look great in this aspect ratio. It's hard to see. But the SDP is sort of the point of contention here. It's a um, session description protocol. And it's a big XML document basically. And it 
has things like V equals zero, uh, A equals, like not helpful stuff, not very easy to deal with. But this is the legacy stuff. So they've created this little utility where you can mouse over any of these things and it tells you what it is. So um, God forbid you ever have to dive into this, you have this <laughs> as, a, as a resource. So, um, so that's kind of what we're, what we're dealing with right now. All right. Cool. So, um, so as I said, it's, it's object-oriented, so it's going to be much, much easier for, uh, for us to develop using this shim than it would to be diving into that, all that other stuff. All right, enough politics. Uh, let's, let's look at what the APIs are and what they do. So it's, uh, WebRTC consists of three APIs, media stream, RTC data channel, and RTC peer connection. And uh, media stream handles the webcam and mic. Um, you probably, you may be familiar with that already, playing around with that. RTC data channel allows peers to connect and share arbitrary data. Um, and then RTC peer connection is really the engine of WebRTC. It gets the connections made, the peer connections, handles all of that stuff, bandwidth management, all sorts of things inside there. Um, so let's look at each one really quickly. Um, the media stream is basically just get user media. Right? And um, once you have a media stream, you can play it locally in an object, um, like a video or audio tag, right? or you can send it out to connected peers. Uh, you send that out through an RTC peer connection. All right, so here is an example of that. I just put together one quick example of each here. Go back here. All right, I need a volunteer for this one. Who's gonna come up? Volunteer? Come on. Because <laughs> I, can't, I can't demo this and do it at the same time. Uh, come right in front of my webcam here. All right. I don't know if anyone has seen this before, but it's pretty cool. All right. Whoop. Wait, loading video images. Oh, wait. Uh, and this is something when, you, when you're designing um, for WebRTC. See that little tiny thing way up there, deny and allow? You're probably going to want to like gray out the whole screen and big arrows pointing to it because it's so easy to miss that. You have to allow access to the camera before anything happens. And in Firefox, it's in a different place. <laughs> All right, so there you are. So I'm going to start this. Oopsie. Ah. Okay, come on. All right, cool. So it's reading your face data now. And let's see. Kim Kardashian, nice, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, say, just open, like say something. Open your mouth. Hello, go Rico. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So you can really, um, you can combine this stuff with other APIs and do some really fun things. Uh, here we go, Bieber. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, thanks. Yay. <laughs> that really quickly. Weird stuff happens. All right, cool. So, uh, so yeah, you can have a lot of fun with this stuff. Um, so that's that one. And then we have, um, not quite as fun, but just as powerful, the RTC data channel. Um, it, as I said, it's fast and efficient sharing of data. Um, it's encrypted. It has all sorts of things like congestion control built into it. And um, it's good for multiplayer games, um, you know, text chat, of course, um, sharing files. Um, there's actually a, um, an app that you can, it just has a big box, and you can drag a file from your file system right into your browser onto the box, and you share it peer-to-peer -peer with somebody else. It gives you a link, and you can share that. So there's um, really cool stuff like that you can do with it. Um, it's basically the same API as WebSockets. Um, so it's pretty easy to get started if you've worked with WebSockets at all. Um, it's, the main difference is that it is peer-to-peer, -peer, so it can be more efficient than, than WebSockets. Um, an example for that one. And new. And 
So this was a Chrome experiment um, that Google did a while back using um, the, uh, the data channel. And it's basically a multiplayer game. So you can play a friend, play a bear. <laughs> if you uh, have someone that you want to play with, which I don't necessarily want to do right now. Um, oh, I've lost it. Uh, you can, it'll give you a link. You can share that link with a friend, and then you can both be playing the game together. And um, I'll just play a bear right now, but it's pretty cool. It puts your video up there and everything. All right. Oh, somebody. There's always somebody who wants to do this. can play this game together and uh, yeah oh all right so you get the picture I'm terrible oh see how oh. ah, awful at this game how many times I practice it I'm not just can't get it all right so so there's all sorts of things like that you can do um, rather than just build a Skype killer um, so the third, uh, part, third API in WebRTC is RTC Peer Connection. And um, like I said, this is the engine that drives everything. And like any vehicle, there's a lot going on under the hood here. Um, all sorts of things that, thank goodness, we don't have to deal with um, that are abstracted for us, like um, you know, connecting to uh, servers, multiplexing, video codecs, uh, echo cancellation is in there. Um, all sorts of things that, that are abstracted in the API. So just to give you sort of an uh, API level view of um, the flow of a peer connection, the first thing that you would do is um, use the MediaStream API to get the local media, grab the webcam and mic. Then you set up a signaling channel. And this is the first time I'm mentioning signaling channel. Um, signaling channel uh, will help you negotiate the, or make, make it possible to negotiate a peer connection. So it's the, the thing that told me that there was somebody waiting for me to join the game. That's the signaling channel. Um, so once that's initiated and we're both in the same place, then um, we can set up that peer connection, right? And then um, we attach the media to the connection. And then we exchange those session descriptions, that SDP thing, the XML that I showed you. Um, we exchange that, and that basically will tell, um, we tell each other um, what type of uh, media we can accept, if there, we have bandwidth restrictions, um, you know, what browser we're on, all that information that we need, and also the path, um, any other paths that we need to, um, to finalize that connection. And, um, and then we're connected. So there are some elements. Um, I mentioned the, the um, signaling channel. Um, there are some elements also that need to come into play to make it all possible. Um, the, oops. There uh, is actually, I, meant, you know, I mentioned that there was uh, ability to connect to landline phones. You can also connect to SIP clients, jingle clients, uh, laptops, you know mobile phones, all sorts of things that are possible in the environment for WebRTC. So looking at the architecture, um, in a perfect world, you would have one browser connected directly to another browser with no plugins or anything in between. It can work this way if you're on the same LAN, basically. Um, but in the world, real world, we do need a little bit of help to get through that. So to get our two peers connected directly, um, we need a server that can introduce them, and that would be a signaling server. Um, this could be hosted on the same server where your web pages are being hosted, or you could use a service, or you, you, know, you could host it somewhere else. So um, that will help you perform a handshake. Um, the server will introduce those two peers and then get out of the way, right? So they're connected. And um, that's great except, you know, when it doesn't work, <laughs> which I'll get to in a minute. Um, so for signaling, 
Um, you can use anything for signaling. There, it is not specified in the WebRTC spec. So you could do anything from, you know, send the connection information through chat, email, smoke signals, doesn't matter. Um, you know, a lot of people will use uh, web sockets or you can use, um, uh, you know, XMPP, you can use Google's channel API, all sorts of different options for signaling, for that initial signaling. There's even a, um, a Ruby signaling, um, signaling server that uses the Ruby event machine. Um, it's open source, and you could implement that if you wanted to. So why do we need servers? I said that sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> um, it was supposed to be peer-to-peer. -peer. Ah. Um, but you know, a lot of times we'll have firewalls, locked down internal networks, quality problems, all sorts of things that are going to get in the way, right? So we actually do need servers. Um, so this is where the fun acronyms of WebRTC come into play. We got STUN, TURN, and ICE. Um, so let's see how these strange things will work together to uh, get us all connected. So just to simplify things, we have Jane and John, right? Um, Jane's behind a firewall. She has no idea um, you know, what her external IP address is, right? Um, so she just knows her internal IP. So she sends that to John, and of course, John can't connect via that because it's like sending a letter without an address or, you know, uh, without a city and state. So he can't connect. So what we need is a stun server. And it's basically like uh, whatsmyip.com, if you ever use that. It just tells you what your external IP address is. And, um, you can grab that, you can send it to the peer, and he would do the same thing, and then they're connected. So the stun server will do that, it will make that introduction, and then get out of the way, and this is called hole punching. But it doesn't always get through the roadblocks. You know, sometimes there's high security networks, there's mobile carriers that get in the way. Um, sometimes stun just isn't enough. And in those cases, um, we will turn to a turn server. And that uh, is traversal using relays over NAT. Um, so as its name implies, it is a relay server. Again, not truly peer-to-peer, -peer, but it will get around those roadblocks and get people connected. So um, it will you know, just uh, relay the data through. But uh, WebRTC wasn't really built to handle this kind of handshaking where you're trying a server, it fails, and then you gotta try again. Um, so that's why we have this thing called ICE, Interactivity Connect or Interactive Connectivity Establishment. Um, and this is just a way to adapt, to go through, iterate through an array of connection options until it finds one that connects, um, and then connect. Otherwise, we would have to, if we didn't have ICE, built into the API, we would have to start a whole new session to try to connect in a different way. So it will go through, iterate through and find one and connect. So that's happening kind of, that's everything on the back end. Those are the servers. Um, so how do you get started with all of this stuff? Uh, I did have a lot of trouble in the beginning, you know, coming from uh, the whole Flash world, and you know, I was doing the same kinds of things, but I, I saw that, well, this WebRTC thing, I really want to figure this out, and um, this is really cool that I could do this and not have to pay licensing fees. Um, so I dove into it, and it was hard. I mean, it was um, just, everything out there was written by these telecommunications engineers, you know. Um, so, uh, so I really had to break it down. And, um, and there's a lot more out there now than there was, which is great. So all you really need is your core programming skills, right? HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Ruby. No. Um, you just need an HTML editor, a webcam and microphone, of course, to, um, to test everything, and the latest build of Chrome or Firefox. And I highly recommend using Chrome um, because they have something called WebRTC internals. It's a tool that does, gives you all sorts of diagnostics. Um, 
in, while you're you know, troubleshooting and, and building WebRTC apps. It can really come in handy. So, um, so Chrome. Um, and then you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You could start out with uh, one of the services that, that are out there. If you just want to use WebRTC, um, of course, there are some you know, ready-to-use services like the one that I just showed you um, and many others popping up. And um, if you uh, want to build something, um, if you want to build something so get like a white label thing with modules that you can put together. There are plenty of those available as well. Um, and also all the hosting, so you don't have to worry about stone or turn. You could sign up for a service, and they just give you the URLs, and you put them in your array, and you, know, you don't have to deal with any of that stuff. Um, Open Talk is one, T-O-K. They've got a whole um, you know, user community and everything around that, um, a lot of enterprise customers. Um, video, RTCIO is similar. Um, and Xersys is also a hosting company. Um, they used to, they, they're also in Fluxus. If you've ever worked with streaming with Influxus um, in the past, this is their WebRTC. You know, they've got a whole new WebRTC arm for hosting. So they're great to work with. Um, and if you'd rather not deal with all that and you really want to dive in yourself, um, you can do that too. There are um, open source stun and turn servers that you can host yourself. You can use those. There are node modules for building those things um, and all sorts of signaling solutions that you can configure however you need to. Um, some pre-built frameworks that you'll want to look at. And I highly recommend starting with framework. Um, I'm sure you, you know all, uh, plenty of reasons why to do that. Um, you know, I recommend uh, Simple WebRTC is a great one, um, but again, there's a lot. And then if you do need to work with plain telephone networks, if you've got to integrate with those, there are frameworks to start off with there, too. So I like Simple WebRTC. Simple WebRTC will let you build a multi-person chat room um, with all the features of, you know, it, it, it's a modular thing, so you can put in features. Um, for example, they have a module for, um, like Hangouts has, where the person who's speaking, the picture gets bigger, that, that kind of thing. Um, that's just a, a plug-in, like a module that you can include. And um, th this code right here will build a multi-person chat room in Simple WebRTC. Very cool. Um, and uh, of course, it's all open source, and you can you know, pick it apart and add it and add to it and customize it as much as you want. Um, this is what it looks like, kind of bare bones, not styled or anything. And um, this was actually a test that I did. Um, I was building it for my, uh, this is an example in my Pluralsight course, and I was uh, putting it together and testing it, and I needed someone to test it with. So this, in the center there is my husband, who was in the other room <laughs> at the time. And, uh, and then I was like, oh, I need somebody else. So I um, texted my sister because she lives in Indiana, and I was like, I'll get you around, and she said, oh, yeah, my husband, you know, t uh, Mark and I are at Buffalo Wild Wings right now. We both have our laptops with us, and we have cocktails. What are you up to? <laughs> Sister strange, but <laughs> um, so she, um, they both logged in under the Wi-Fi at Buffalo Wild Wings and popped up on the screen, and, um, and it worked great. I was really surprised and uh, happily surprised that that worked, so, um, so it's easy to do. So, all right, so we got to look at the politics behind the spec, what's happening there, um, where it works right now, where it doesn't, um, kind of a view of where it will be working soon. Um, got an overview of the API and what it can do, um, and server pieces and all of that. So now what? Um, where do you go from here if you really want to dive in? Um, I put together a list of resources on my site, in this URL here. Uh, that includes things like the simplest API examples. Um, Sam Dutton had put together some great ones. Um, if you really want to look at the API, he's, you know, it's all laid out for you in these really simple um, examples. And of course, there's tutorials. HTML5 Rocks has some good ones. Um, I've got links to all of those. And there's, um, there's also apprtcappspot.com. That is, um, if you go to that URL, it just pops up a, a multi-person chat room instantly and um, gives you a URL that you can share with somebody randomly generated. Um, and they have open source code for that. 
that you can grab. So I point to that. And if you want to see um, some kind of cutting edge experimental stuff, I definitely recommend checking out Mua's Khan site, WebRTC Experiment, uh, experiment.com. Um, he's doing some amazing stuff, including recording streams and um, a lot of different experiments. So I'd definitely check that out. And there are actually two books that have been published on this already. Um, in WebRTCBook.com, that one is in its third edition. Yes, it's great what you can do with electronic publishing now. Um, and then I think O'Reilly just uh, released one as well. So, um, and then of course I also have a plural site course um, on WebRTC, kind of the fundamentals of WebRTC. But if you, um, you know, bookmark that link, I'll always I keep that updated with the latest stuff. Um, I'll also have this presentation up there too. So just to give you an idea of the potential of where this is going, um, there was a study that predicts 6.2 billion WebRTC-enabled endpoints by 2018. And that is you know, everything from mobile phones, tablets, um, devices, you know, your microwave, all sorts of things that will be able to communicate using WebRTC. So it's really an exciting time. And, um, Segments like financial services, healthcare, insurance are really interested in this for customer service purposes mostly. Um, so, you know, somebody who comes up with a great idea to integrate with their systems is going to be um, doing well. So, in a recent industry survey, um, the biggest perceived barrier to adopting and getting started with WebRTC was a lack of awareness in the community. So I hope we are handling that today at least. <laughs> and um, the second, uh, second and, and third you see are support by Microsoft and Apple. People are really concerned about that. And um, this study was actually done back in November. So um, I think that probably would shift at least on the Microsoft end down a little bit. I think it can be pretty confident that that's happening soon. So so uh, this is actually me doing a uh, Spartan race a couple weeks ago. And uh, <laughs> so I feel like um, this is how I feel when I work with WebRTC. <laughs> like I got over, you get over the obstacles and, you know, I can't guarantee that you'll feel this way when you build your first app, but you might. <laughs> so, um, so I hope you feel a little bit less intimidated by WebRTC. You kind of got the lay of the land um, and more fired up about what you might be able to do with it. And um, I would love to see what you do with it. Um, please share with me any of your experiments or trouble. Like, I'm available for questions. I've probably already, um, you know, ran up against some of the obstacles that you probably will. So feel free to reach out to me anytime um, on Twitter or my blog. Um, and also, of course, my, my uh, plural site course um, is available, and um, I think I can say that later on, if you stick around, their Pluralsight is giving away a full year of um, Pluralsight, which is pretty awesome. Okay. Um, so check that out. But um, yeah, please uh, feel free to get in touch, and I don't know if I have time for questions. I got two minutes for questions, so, so that's it. Thank you.